Hello, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Dr. Jia here again. This is day five of the Write Better and Faster Challenge. So I'm going to give a few more seconds and we'll get started. If you're here, say hi, say hi in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. Um, okay, and this is streaming at uh, three separate places, YouTube, LinkedIn, and also on Facebook. All right. Uh, so if you are on other platforms, please say hi there as well. Okay, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about one that is really, really uh, important is to get that style, that research paper style, how, how, you know, um, when you read a novel, it has a different feel to it. When you read a po poem, it has a different feel to it. And research paper has its own look and style to it. And so today I'm going to break it down. What makes it sound academic or what makes it sound like a research paper? Okay. So, um, to break it down in the most simple form, these are the six elements of academic writing. The first is um, the voice. It is a formal tone. So that means we don't use contraction, not it's. It, it has to be it is. Um, and the second one is it has to be clear. Third is it has to be concise. Fourth is it has to be precise. And number five, it has an argument. This is really, really important. That really actually is one that makes a research paper a research paper. And then number six, it's a bonus tip uh, called show and tell. And so I'm going to talk about uh, elements number five and six tomorrow because they are much bigger topics and need <clears throat> a separate um, talk, uh, a separate session on it. Okay. Okay. So the first element, be uh, want to be clear. Be clear means easy to understand. So how do you write in such a way that it's clear and easy to understand? I call it like, um, when you write clearly, it's like giving instructions in the right order. So when you give instructions to uh, give uh, directions in the right order. So when you give directions to somebody, you don't just tell them, oh, um, walk from here and then you skip all the middle bits and say, oh, you're gonna reach somewhere else. So you actually guide them step by step. Right. And then the so how, how do you do it? You walk them through the different points so that they, they don't get lost in the middle. And you do not assume that your um, reader knows all the middle steps to get to the problem. So, for example, you have to start what the problem is, what has been done, why isn't it working and then why you want to do a research paper. So you're walking them step by step. And then number two, another trick is to use signposts. Right. Uh, so when you're giving directions, you you don't tell them every single lane, every single uh, street corner to turn. You actually use landmarks to help, help them. For example, you say, um, oh, walk to walk uh, uh, 100 yards or 10 feet down the road. And when you see McDonald's, turn left. So that is a landmark or a signpost. So what is the equivalent of a signpost in <clears throat> a research paper? We, we call it section headers, you know, the introduction section, the discussion section, the results section. And then each one has uh, multiple subsection, uh, subheaders as well. And then in the paragraph, that is also, you also use landmark. And one of the landmark we've talked about is the topic sentence. That helps you guide your readers, what is it about? And how do you keep it clear? Then the second element is to be concise. How do you be concise? To be concise means short and to the point, okay? okay? To keep it concise, the easiest way is uh, don't trim the small branches first. Always cut big, then you cut small, okay? So remove the big chunks of irrelevant paragraphs first. So typically, where do you find the fluff? Um, it is in the introduction section and also in the discussion section, okay? So that's where you find a lot of fluff. And second is to keep one main idea per paragraph. Again, we are talking back about topic sentences. So if you want to cut things, read each paragraph and see, okay, does every single sentence in that paragraph, does it serve the topic sentence? If it serves the topic sentence, you keep it. If it does not, take it out. And then the third is use short sentences if you can. Uh, so keep one idea per sentence. 
And then the final one, this is a master trick, uh, master the long sentence. So when I say this, when I tell people about this, they're like, what? I thought you just told me to use short sentences. Long sentences has its place as well in a research paper. And usually there are a few examples uh, you can try. So long sentences will be uh, useful when you are writing a list. So for example, these are the variables we use in the research paper. Now you can list like 10 things. So it's a long sentence. And now you actually keep it concise. You don't, um, uh, you, you don't separate it to five, separate, uh, five different sentences. In one long sentence, you just begin with, these are the few things we're looking at, and then you list it out. So the, these are um, some tricks you can use to uh, make a paper more concise. Um, number five, you can also uh, make sure you use the active form instead of uh, perfect tenses. So active forms means I eat, I drink, I bake, instead of I am baking, I have been baking. So, so it keeps it more concise. And it, when you do an active form, you're avoiding uh, all the INGs or having, eating. You, when you do that, it's not just the words being shorter, but um, the number of syllables so that you are not putting so much effort in the reader's mind. And then number six is to put statements in positive forms. Uh, for example, instead of saying, did not have much confidence in, replace with the word distrust or not many, change it to few, not negative, change it to positive. And then finally, omit needless words or lengthy expressions. So this is a whole list of that, uh, a whole list of lengthy expressions. I'm gonna talk, say it out, say out a few, but uh, you get my point, okay? Uh, for example, despite the fact that, change it to although, in the event that, change it to if, um, due to the fact that, because, or, um, one I see very common is um, in need of the hour. Just say in need, okay? And then the third one is to be precise. To be precise means to be exact and accurate. So why is it so important to be precise and uh, exact and accurate? It's because this is a research paper and you don't want your readers to misunderstand or um, misinterpret your results or your um, argument. All right, how do you keep it precise? So to keep it precise, um, let's step back and, and um, let me explain why is it so important. So certain words have different meanings depending on the context. For example, when you see the word significance, so what does it mean? Does it mean large effect? In English, it means maybe it's large, is it important? Maybe it means meaningful. But in the research paper, it, the way you write it could mean different things. Do you mean statistically significant? So you have to be very, very um, clear about what you when you use a certain word. And also to keep it precise is um, at the higher level is are your claims overstated or overgeneralized? So reviews, reviewers, what they don't like is when you have a certain result and you overstate it or you overgeneralize it because they want your um, claims to be really related to what your results are. And uh, number three is to give con con concrete examples. This one, I'm gonna explain a little bit more tomorrow, uh, but for now, let's just, um, uh, we'll skip this for now, okay? And then finally, who is the subject? So when you see it, they, there is, this, so especially when you have multiple, if, if you have a long sentence with multiple sections, this can be confusing. So you have to ask yourself, is it clear to the readers who or what you're referring to, okay? Is it um, when you say they, do you mean the researcher? Do you mean the patient? Do you mean uh, the medical field itself? So make sure you, when you read, you think back, is it clear to the readers? All right, so for the task for today, um, what I want you to do is for the first 20 minutes, um, you can spend more time if you want, if you already have an existing work, start editing your work using one of these four, uh, these elements. 
um, if right now you don't have an active project, what you can do is also dig, dig up your previous work. You know, maybe you have written a review paper before or case report before. And now take that same work and choose one element and see if you can improve on it. On it. So if you want to work on uh, clarity, if you want to be clear, ask yourself as you read it, am I giving directions to my readers? Uh, then second one, if you want to be more concise, can I say this in a more direct way? And then number three, to be precise. Uh, to me, is there a way to be a more accurate way to say this? Is that a better word for me? And then for the last 15 minutes, I want you to do your copy work drill again. Okay, here, copy for 10 minutes. And once you're done, I want you to go back and evaluate what you have copied and see what I've done. Is it clear? Is it concise? Or is it precise? Just choose one, okay? So now it's not just the copying, but now you're actually evaluating the copy work. Again, these are all the exercises for you to get used to the style and downloading uh, the style. And by the end of this week, you can go back and look at uh, your original work and see how much you have improved over the past one week, okay? So if you have done your work, uh, take a picture, give a like, uh, so that the video gets uh, got um, get spread to more people and also tag me on your social media so that you you stand a chance of winning a prize at the end of the week. Okay, I'll see you again tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow is really important about argument and how to show and tell. These are key things that you need to use in your research paper to make it good. All right, I'll see you again. Take care. Bye-bye.